Hey guys, and welcome to Petroped, and welcome to the Rennsport 2.7 RS. Dream day, people, dream day. Now, let's get back to the barn and I'll tell you all about this incredible car. Oh my days. Okay, so we are back at the barn and plenty to talk about. I get an awful lot of nice cars parked on this bit of driveway, but honestly, for me, this is right up there. I absolutely adore this car. I think ever since I became a Porsche owner myself with my 718 Boxster GTS, which is parked up just behind me, I've started to get more and more into the whole Porsche thing and started to look back at some of the older cars and these more classic early 911s just tick a lot of boxes for me. I think it's a pretty, pretty car. I'm very lucky. I know a few people who have them. And even when we were filming Vintage Voltage, we did a 911 2.7 RS replica and I just thought it was a beautiful, beautiful looking thing. So when my neighbor, Jeremy said to me, would you like the keys to my Rennsport 2.7 RS? Um, I said, yes, please, that would be lovely. <laughs> so there's so much to talk about. Now I, I am gonna preface this, I'm by no means an expert in older 911s, but um, it's a beautiful car. So this was built by Rennsport back in 2014. So it's quite an early Rennsport car. And it's actually a 1984 3.2 Carrera reimagined as a 2.7 RS. So underneath is a 3.2 Carrera, but there's a lot of work being done, a full restoration. And at the front end, that includes uh, RS steel wings, a 1973 long bonnet, that's what that's called. And then the bumpers front and rear are both RS, new lighting as well. So it gives it that, that extra look on the outside. Um, suspension's had a full workover. It's on poly bushes, it's on Bilstein shocks. And then for me, one of the standout features of the car is it's got the classic Fuchs alloys. I just think they are absolutely beautiful. 16 inch alloys, uh, seven inches wide at the front, eight inches wide at the back. But the car just sits beautifully. I think it looks fantastic. Tangerine orange is the color with the Carrera decals down the side. I just think it's classic. It oozes charisma, it oozes charm, it oozes character, and I just think it's very, very cool. Let's wander around the back because, <laughs> come on, it's got a ducktail. So walking around the back of the car, first up, you can probably tell just how small this car is. It's got such a dinky little footprint. The 911's kind of grown in length and width and, and just in mass as well, but we'll come to that in a moment. Now I'm going to say something here that might upset a few 911 aficionados. I always prefer 911s when they have some kind of spoiler or wing on the back. I know the sleek classic lines without them are what many people prefer, but I don't know what it is. I just find the car looks more balanced when there's something on the back. Either the iconic duck, uh, ducktail that we've got on here, or I guess of this era, the turbo had the big whale tail on the back and then more modern cars. You know, you've got the wing on the GT3s and those types of things. I always just find that balances the car and that's my personal preference. So this is right up my straight. This is actually a, an RS ducktail engine lid um, and I, it sets the car off beautifully. And I think with that and the wider wings and the stance and the Fuchs alloys, just this car sits on the road and looks magnificent. So underneath here, so the engine's had a full rebuild. It's a 3.2 litre flat six. So that's good for about 260 horsepower, which I know in modern money isn't that much, but this car only weighs about a thousand kilos. So power to weight ratio, it's punching. It, it should be plenty, more than enough. And then the thing that makes this car special as well is it's got a stainless steel exhaust system from Le Mans and SSI uh, manifold. So the noise it makes on full chat is gonna be, it's gonna be pretty special. I will do my best to capture that. So I think from the outside, beautiful car, but the restoration was a full exterior and interior restoration. Inside's pretty special as well. In fact, it's just lovely. Whoa. 
Now, the, the first thing I won't be able to convey is it has this lovely classic car smell. It's a kind of combination of petrol and oil and new things, and it's just, it's delicious. It really, really is. Hold on. No, it's not that. <laughs> but it's a beautiful thing in here. So, uh, I guess standout things. First of all, these seats. So, so these are Recaro seats with Harris Tweed inserts, front and rear. It's got the lightweight RS carpeting. Um, it's got lightweight RS door cards, um, which took me a while to work out how to get out. You pull this leather strap to actually get out of the car. Iconic 911 dash, the main focal point is in the middle, you have your rev counter, uh, redlining at just over 6,000 RPM with the speedo just to the right-hand side. Uh, and then you've got this um, uh, upgraded steering wheel as well. None of this airbag rubbish, just a beautiful racing-inspired steering wheel. Absolutely stunning. And you look out over the dash and you just see the, the two kind of bulges going down on top to the headlights either side of the car. It's just a really cool view. Uh, and then a couple of other things. This car has maintained, uh, it's got electric windows and it's also got an electric sunroof, which I guess the 2.7 RS wouldn't have had for weight, but what they did get rid of was central locking, hence the leather pull to reduce some weight. And then everything else is pretty minimalist in here. There's not even a radio, um, but it is just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Five speed manual box. Um, so I think, I think it's about time we went out for a drive. <laughs> I cannot wait, cannot wait to experience this car. Okay. <laughs> Let's start this review just letting the car warm up, getting used to it. Immediate impressions. As I've mentioned already, it's quite a small car, but you've got this magnificent view out of the front windscreen. You're very close to the front windscreen because it comes down at quite an angle. I think the, the newer the 911's got, the further the windscreen went away from you, the more rake it had. But this is right, right there. I can touch it without stretching my arm out. I've got this fantastic view out over the bonnet with the two bulges where the headlights are. I've got these tiny little circular mirror on the right hand side to look out the back and the rear view mirror, you just see the top of the duck tail. And the theatre that this car has, it's just quite something. I've been going less than a mile and already I'll tell you now, the steering is so light and so delicious, you can feel you're in a lightweight car. It's been a while since I've driven a car that weighs this little. A thousand kilos for a modern car is almost unheard of. As I mentioned in my BMW film last week, the, the Alpine A110 I had was, you know, 11, nearly 1200 kilos. I have another Porsche look, fantastic. They do the wavy thing, clearly. But a thousand kilos for a modern day car is just not possible with all of the safety measures and the airbags and all the other things that manufacturers have to put on cars. This doesn't have any of that. It's just lightweight. And 260, 250, 260 horsepower in a car that weighs a thousand kilos. That's all plenty. So I'm just keeping an eye on all my various pressures and temperatures and as soon as the car's up to temperature I can start to push on a little bit and exploit this beautiful flat six that's behind me. The on tick over sounds so magnificent. You sometimes don't want to drive the older cars because if you're not careful and you compare them with modern with a modern day compass, they're, they're always going to let you down because modern day cars are so good. Even cheap cars are good these days. So when you go back in time and you drive a car from back in the day, you know you might not have power steering, you might have heavier pedals. The offset of the brake, the brake and the throttle are actually quite a long way apart in this, which is quite surprising. But then you drive them and you just have to take your mind back in time to when they were in period and compare them with their contemporaries back then. And when you do that, when you drive a classic car and you do that, 
they're astonishing things, especially high-end cars like this. This is a beautiful car today, it goes well today. What the hell would it have been like if you drive one of these in period? Oh, wowzers. Okay, so she's starting to warm up a little bit now. Boy. I thought the suspension would be super hard and it's really not, it's actually quite, quite compliant, it's dealing with the road surface really well. Jeremy had kind of said that this car was quite hardcore and more track oriented. And I do feel that it's it's wanting to be driven, it's wanting to be pushed on. But it's not an uncomfortable or crashy ride by any means. But it's the balance and the steering of the car. I think when you drive any 911, that's what you feel, but I've never driven a 911 this old before. And I can't imagine, it makes sense, right? They've been developing the car for years and years and years. So they kind of know what they're doing. But it's so smooth. The engine, oh, I've got the window down a little bit. Two reasons, one, so I can hear the engine. But two, pretty hot in here to be honest. And you get looks from people, everyone's like, it's a friendly car. It's got some go, this. Now, I we gonna find my favorite bit of reviewing road and drive a Ren Sport 2.7 RS down it. In what world did I ever think that was gonna happen? beautiful feeling cars I've ever driven on the public road. It just communicates everything. It's got such a delicious weight to the steering. <laughs> it's quite firm and then you just it loads up almost as it goes into the corner. The engine is willing and revy and it just <laughs> sounds amazing listen to that and what's actually quite nice do you not actually go in that fast not compared with a modern day 911 come down here in a modern day 911 and give it the beans you're gonna be in three figures easy oh big spits and pops out the back oh boy and this is an early rent sport car heaven only knows what they're like now this is good, There's, the brakes have got a nice weight to them. It's the way the front loads up though. It just talks to you. Oh my God. Oh, this is like the most dangerous review ever. I have to have one of these. As I said, Jeremy is actually, I think he's absolutely mad wanting to sell it. But he just doesn't get the use out of it. He doesn't drive it enough and it's a car that needs driving. So he's looking to move it on to a home that will drive it. Now, at the moment it's not advertised anywhere, so I'll put my email address below. If anybody's interested, then I can put you in touch with Jeremy and you can have a conversation about the car. Because honestly, if I had the money, I'll be having a conversation with him myself. it up the petrol pet hill climb let's hope I get a clean run here we go am I gonna be lucky oh. see it's a real weighty to weighty steering Change of sector. 
chest not oh man this car this is one of the most wonderful cars i've ever driven and it's wonderful for many many reasons it's wonderful because i just love these things anyway and i've always wanted to have a go in one but always been worried that they might not deliver a driving experience that matches the lust and want that i have for one well i don't need to worry about that because they do but it's just the way it communicates with you when you're driving. You know, don't get me wrong, it's, there's no creature comforts in here, there's no power steering and, you know, it's very hot and there's no sat-nav and radio and all that kind of stuff. But as a pure driver's car, the way this car talks to you is just unbelievable. The steering weights up beautifully as you go through the corners. It has a really lovely balance. And I've driven the car for hardly any time at all. I'm sure with more seat time you'd get to be able to understand the envelope of the car. It's a rear engine 911 at the end of the day, so I'm sure in the right conditions it would probably want to swap its tail. But the way the car's been set up, the suspension is just mega. I mean, it's so smooth, but yet in the corners it's got this subtlety to it, this balance that the car has. When it sits on the road, you look at it and you think, oh, there's not a big arch gap really between the wheels and the arches. You wonder if the suspension's going to be quite heavy and quite stiff and firm. And it's just really not. It's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. And my God, what was this like in period? But the way that Rensport do these, that they, they take a kind of newer car and they reimagine the old RS, is a very special thing. I would love to drive one of their modern, you know, more recent um, conversions. They're now up with the kind of singers and that type of level in terms of quality and in terms of price as well. But this thing, oh, as I said, email me below people if you're interested and I'll put you in touch with the owner. But Jeremy, thank you. Thank you so much. You know, doing YouTube for me, I love doing my car reviews, but every now and again you get a hold of a really special car and I get to share that experience with you and I hope I've done that today. But I get to keep that experience in here and I get to remember it for a long time. And I'll remember driving this car for a long time because it's absolutely smashing mega thing. Anyway, I might just drive it a bit more. I hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, Please subscribe to Petrolbed for plenty more content to come. And hopefully we'll share more similar cars like this with you as well. But for now, I'm gonna carry on driving this magnificent Porsche. Let's see you on the next film, guys. You take care. Drive safe. <laughs>